Yo, what is going on, boys? Asians, since back with another video. Today's episode, we got a banger. We got a Battles 1 tier list. This has been requested for a long time, and I'm finally getting it out to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you are new to the channel, um, make sure you do hit that subscribe button if you join the content. Be sure to check out all the videos if you haven't, and let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hashtag Road to 100K, baby. All right, boys, here we go with the long requested battles one tier list we're gonna get right into this um i'm hoping to keep this under like 15 minutes if possible but we'll see it's been a while last one i did was a battles two tier list a while ago and that was actually kind of fun to make so we're gonna try it out for battles one now quick context if you don't really know who i am i've been playing battles for almost 10 years now so i would say i'm pretty experienced and knowledgeable about the, these towers although there are balance changes that are still being added to this game so it's not like it's going to be perfect analysis there's some things you know i haven't tinkered with but overall it'll be a generally accurate um tier list i want to say and we'll go from there so I would appreciate any feedback below. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect. There's no such thing as perfection, baby. So we're just going to get right into it and start with what I think is the best tower in the game. So that is probably going to go into the S tier. So I'm actually going to bring, I'm going to draft Banana Farm number one. I think Banana Farm is so freaking powerful. It's any pro matchup, the banana farm is going to be utilized, and that's just facts. So just really, really nice accessory to your loadout. It gets you tons and tons of money, which obviously is going to lead to having more money for rushing and defending. And overall, its impact is just better than any other tower, in my opinion. So I have that baby as an S tier tower. Now, in terms of other money making methods, aside from eco, there are a few others and one of them is the sniper monkey which actually i think is an incredibly powerful tower and i'm leaning towards a plus and s minus for which one to put it at i'm gonna start with s minus here now sniper is incredibly strong for pretty much everything but grouped bloom popping power so once you get the supply drop up which is the sniper farm fourth tier right path it's incredibly strong and it's going to be a great money making method for you if you have a non banana farm strategy. So there's popular strategies like Ninja Sniper Ace that can just defend extremely late and is an exceptional strategy mainly because of the money making up methods of the sniper. You also just have the 2 3 sniper in general, which pairs well with a lot of towers for, you know, defending round 13 rainbow rushes and whatnot and then the cripple moab is actually quite underrated and can be very well utilized late game so i would say the best kind of uh, sniper loadouts are boat sniper ace on water maps is an extraordinary strategy and then ninja sniper ace on non-water maps is probably the best sniper strategy so that is going to be that now let's move on to uh, which tower i think let's switch gears and talk about the least used tower so out of all these towers listed what would you guys think is the least used i'm gonna say chipper and i'm also gonna say darling might be down there as well so i'm just gonna leave these two down here for now and let's just quick cover them i mean the balloon chippers it's not that bad they keep buffing it they've priced ner or lowered the prices of so many upgrades for this tower they even gave it camera section for second tier um but it's still just like not great and i think the main reason is it cannot do anything to zomgs it, it can't you know it's great for bfps and you know moabs and ceramics don't get me wrong but it just it's just not enough <laughs> i don't know it's as simple as that it causes a regrow farm too you can't rely on it for the like main popping power and shredding because it's just going to cause a regrow farm and it's just not great. Now, how can we improve the chipper? I don't know. It's the hardest tower to balance. Now, there was a day and age where the chipper was actually able to infinite stall every single balloon imaginable, including ZMGs, the, which is just not fair. So obviously, <laughs> I went from the god tower to probably one of the least used towers in the game. But I still think there's some utilization in this tower. You know, you have strats like Sub Ninja Chipper. Pairing sub and chipper is pretty good. Getting a reactor and then chipper next to it works fairly well. But 
I'm not gonna talk too much about Chipper. I think it's honestly not in a terrible spot. The thing is, since this game's been out so long, most towers are pretty balanced. So it's not like there's an absolute dog water tower and like a tower that just destroys everything. So, you know, pick your poison. But switching gears, let's go to talk about the Dartling. Now, Dartling, it's expensive, man. For it's it's not great early game because it's so expensive. You can layer on it extremely well. You know, it's probably best, the best Darden chest probably like, you know, the Darden Farm Ninja, Darden Farm Ice, Darden Farm Glue. Anything with stall in it works somewhat well. The issue is the UMG defense with using Dartling as its main popping power is just really, really, really bad and really expensive. Now they recently did upgrade or up, they recently buffed the balloon area denial system, which I'm pretty happy about. And you know, you could maybe use Dartling as a counter to Cobra, but it's just, I don't know. It's just early game usage just isn't as good as I would like. I think maybe nerfing the uh, powerful darts or buffing the powerful darts a little bit could work or just buffing the DPS of say, like the laser cannon to Moabs or something like that would help or the hydroacopods. Cause right now those, the third tiers for this tower are pretty bad. I'm going to be honest. And the Ray of Doom's like what, 50,000? It's insane. But let's just switch over to what I think is probably one of the best towers in the game, and that is the Wizard Monkey. Now, I have been using the Wizard a lot. I I think the best Wizard strategy is Wiz Farm Ace. If you're gonna use a Wiz strategy, and you're gonna soon see like all three of those towers are in probably S and above. So very strong loadout. I mean, I'd say Wiz is one of the most versatile towers in the game because obviously it has no weaknesses. It can pop camos, it can pop leads. It can pop Moabs with the Summon Phoenix ability and just the Dragon's Breath. The Lightning's an extremely strong upgrade. You can counter Cobra with it. It pairs well. Once you get a Lightning, you're pretty much fine until around six at the earliest. And it just works really efficiently. And I can't say a single bad thing about it. I think it could use a slight nerf. Maybe be increase the cost of Summon Phoenix would be a solution or just a very slight price increase to something like the Lightning could be valid, but I'm not gonna bore you guys too much. Uh, Wiz Farm Tax, also a great strategy if you wanna play aggressive against, uh, or on shorter maps, it works quite well. If you're playing against a good player, it's a little bit more difficult because they can just mix eco against your aggressive Wiz Farm Tax and probably be fine, assuming they have something like Dark Farm Ace. Okay, so now let's switch over to Ice Monkey. Now, the ice has gotten some nerfs. It really has, I still think it, might be in the s minus though uh it, actually i'm gonna move it to an a plus just because they nerfed the shards they nerfed the shards and the uh, ice village tech so i'll leave it a plus for now it's still insanely strong because of how good strategies like heli farm ice ninja farm ice not you don't really see ninja farm ice too much but it is viable believe it or not and having the viral frost be able to fight the camos is game changing as well you see strategies like triple stall do quite well ninja ice glue works insanely well because sure you're not gonna be able to get an insane eco but guess what you have triple stall you can you, you can just stall the rush forever and then just counter so it's extraordinarily strong double ice like i said is really good early game you can on good ice maps you can solo with two ices until round eight so that'll just allow you to farm like crazy so really strong tower like i said ice shards getting nerfed i think demotes this from an s minus to an a plus for now we'll leave it at that and just because we are already almost nine minutes into this video so i don't want to and we have a lot of towers covered so let's go to what i think is one of the best towers in the game the monkey ace the monkey freaking ace bro this tower is so good now they actually did nerf the ground zero by 10 no by a thousand yeah they increased the price like by a thousand to seventeen thousand, i think um which is interesting but it's still an incredible tower you know operation dart storm is like the best counter to cobra <laughs> it, it's just so good so you don't have to worry about strategies like that and honestly the fact that good players can ace micro and control the padding of ace so effectively is makes it extremely strong at defending any mid game rush and then like i said i mean the ground zero on its own is just so so strong pair that with like whiz or dart and it is just a powerhouse so it's very strong. Spectre's obviously good against um, ceramics, unless you're me on Yin Yang, so that's also great. Um, now, let's switch to another stall tower, the Nina. The Nina. I think Ninja's probably another A-plus tower. I might move it to an S-minus, we'll see, but 
It's so, so strong. You have strats like Ninja Farm Ace, Ninja Farm NG. Those are the two strategies that come to mind. Obviously, the triple stall I mentioned earlier, Ninja Ice Glue is also good. But the Blue Jitsu is extremely strong. I think it could use a slight price increase, but it's like so, so good. Sabotage Supply Lines is honestly not like unbalanced. It's $5,000 for the ability, but uh, just having that stall makes a tower so much better than other towers, which is why you're going to see Ninja Ice and Sniper up here. Uh, just because of the stall factor whereas the chipper stall is just like <laughs> it's a different kind of stall bro <laughs> but yeah um I, I think the ninja's like not super unbalanced i i, I really my only complaint is like that the blue jitsu is a little too strong for his price that might be a hot take i don't know if anyone's gonna agree with me on that but that's where i kind of feel it is i mean ninja on its own can't solo everything it needs towers like ng it needs a tower like ace or ice to help it out but we'll leave it a plus for now and now let's go back to towers that we don't really see utilized um too often i think spike factory is one of them i'm gonna put it in the c freaking tier bro because i mean the spike storm ability it's not bad if you are using the spike storm ability also side note make sure you have bigger stacks on it if you're microing the spike storm ability without bigger stacks you're just a bozo and that you're just not getting as near as much popping bar as you could but yeah man you spack on its own is just terrible like you're not gonna defend early game with just spack spack doesn't get utilized until really like round 12 if you have a strat like ng farm spike factory which is like the only viable spike factory strategy uh honestly like it's literally the only one that's used and there's it's for good reason so i don't, I don't know how you can buff it um i i don't like I, how are you gonna buff it to make it bounce but like or not bounce like better but you don't want it to be a, like an early game beast because that's just like i mean it's a spike factory bro like <laughs> it's not ptd6 so there's actually rushes your spike factory has to deal with and that kind of makes things difficult but i won't dive too much into that i i will say like ng farms back is a great strat but it just dies like around 32 to an all out against a farm player okay let's go with 20 let's go to the dart monkey i think dart monkey we can put in maybe a I, I, I kind of like a, a plus though. We'll keep it a plus for now. It, again, another very versatile tower like the wizard. However, it's not as good late game. It is still incredibly strong for the first 30 plus rounds. Now, literally every single upgrade of it is useful. Like the trip dart is so good early game. Spolts are really good for defending layered rushes and group rushes. And obviously the juggernaut's really good. So at popping camos and leads. And whatnot and then you just put the fan get a fan club for late game throw that on strong and then just clean it up with a little ground zero action against any rush and you're good so dart farm ace obviously a very uh popular strategy amongst the pro players because of how versatile it is and skillful you kind of have to be like to make dart farm ace work you have to be really good at targeting your dart monkeys and your ace highlighting or pathing if you will so yeah man I, i'd say darts just darts probably been the most explored tower uh, other than farms in this game and people have really learned how to use it super well so it is very good make sure you put those jugs on straight lines and they will do work for you okay let's switch over to the mortar i think i'm just gonna throw mortar in a i think it's kind of in the middle of the pack i obviously the best mortar strategy is boat farm mortar on boat maps swan lake it's by far the best strategy you can maybe get away with something like Boat Sniper Ace, but it is difficult. Both, both our mortar is just so, so strong on most water maps. And just being able to target your mortar, micro the artillery battery ability to stalling these UMGs and whatnot, and just any mob class balloons is really nice. Uh, the big one is a great counter to Cobra. Lunar adjustment stuff, so that's also good. And I mean, it's just an overall great tower. I think it's very, very balanced as well at this current state. I, it's like perfect, so. I think the mortar is great tower. Um, it's really just kind of a, a helping hand in a way, you know, getting that group popping power, getting the burning stuff applied, using it as a D camo works well. So speaking of D camos, let's switch gears to the monkey sub. I'm gonna throw monkey sub into A minus, believe it or not, for now. For now, that's where it's gonna sit. And the reason I have it there is the reactor is a great upgrade. Don't get me wrong. But the airburst start, I think, got nerfed a little too much where it's just not great early game. It's not really a super viable early game tower. Uh, I will say ballistic missile's good. First strike's good. 
but I, I think it just gets outclassed by Boat on a majority of maps, which is why I'm going to put Boat actually right up here. I think Boat, the Grape Shot, is just such an exceptional early game tower on water maps that it just like outclasses like a 0-2 air restart by a lot. And it's it's just so strong. Have, being able to boat pull BFBs is game changing. That's a huge plus for the boat over the uh, sub. Obviously the reactor is great. I mean, that's the best upgrade for the sub pretty much, but having the ability to destroy is extremely strong for Moab Shred. Aircraft carriers are good under a village. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of good ways to utilize boat, but yeah, boat barn mortar, boat barn boomer, are like the two main strats you'll see with that. And then a little bit of sprinkle in of uh, boat sniper ace. So let's talk about the super monkey. I'm going to put this B plus for now. I think it's better than these three. One change I would love to see is giving epic range super monkey camo section. Like what's wrong with giving that baby camo section, man? I, I, I like it just they keep lowering the starting cost. It's only 1800 now. So you can see strats like dark farm super and then just get a super set targeted to strong against Moabs and the single Single target shred is not bad. It's really not, but I haven't really used it enough. And it's just a really expensive tower to utilize. So it's kind of why I'm keeping it down here. Just because you need so, so much money to make it viable. It's kind of like dartling. Like you need so much money for Ray of Doom spam. Okay, let's get the glue gunner going. I think glue, honestly, I'll put him right here. The glue hose is probably one of the upgrades that needs a nerf the most. The thing's like $2,200, and it defends like everything, dude. <laughs> it's insane. Obviously, it doesn't have camo detection, so it's not quite as good as the Ninja and Ice, in my opinion. But I think the glue hose is so strong. Like, Kelly Farm glue on maps where your ice isn't super good is really strong. And then since glue hose is so strong, you can pull off strats like Ninja Ice glue, which is the best glue strategy. So I'm going to keep it an A. And now let's switch over to NG. I think NG could also be A. Yeah, we're going to move it right here. I might move some things around before the end of this video, but I'm going to keep it an A. I mean, the Bloom Trap is so, so, so strong. Only $3,800. It makes you an insane amount of money. It really hurts eco players if you have NG. So it's a nice hard counter there and nothing can really get by it also like ng early game is so good you can anti stall really efficiently with like a sprocket set on last on a good straight path and it can be a really it's like the best aggressive tower in the game in my opinion so we'll keep it there and speaking of aggression let's switch to tack tack i'm gonna put i'm putting tack b plus for now just because it scales off super hard late game like Obviously, the Blade Shooter is great early to mid game and will get you good farms, but I just don't feel super strong about it here. I mean, it's very rarely used at the top level on non short maps. Obviously, on short maps, the Maelstrom is going to be quite useful, but so is like a turbocharge. And usually, people value turbocharge over Maelstrom because of the camo um, abilities or turbocharge being able to hit camos in this game. So I'm also going to put Boomer in A-. minus. Now, Boomer's really only utilized on short maps because of how nice it is to have the Turbo Charge. Now, the Glaive Lord's actually quite a good counter to Cobra, Bloom Adjustment as well. I love to bring up the counters to Cobra, Bloom Adjustment because it's a very like important aspect of a tower, in my opinion. And just seeing the ability of the Boomer to withstand that with the Glaive Lord is actually pretty good. So... We'll put it here. I mean, it scales off super, super hard late game, just like TAC, which is why it's only an A-. minus. But its job is early game, and it does a great job of that. So we'll put it there. Now, let's talk about the Cobra. Cobra, I'm honestly putting B+, plus, dude. I am. I'm putting Cobra B+. Plus. I'll maybe put it right here, though. And the reason is, man, like, NK nerf has nerfed this thing so much. Blue adjustment's more expensive. The wired funds only gives you 70 per round instead of 80. Like, I honestly would love to see that change reverted. But Cobra is just not super viable if you have towers like Ace out there that are just such a hard counter to balloon adjustment. And then all the other ones I mentioned as well. So we'll keep it B plus for now. 
I mean, the best Cobra strats, obviously, Cobra Bomb Mortar. It just is. And we'll talk about Bomb now. I, I guess we can put Bomb kind of B plus as well. I think that's fine because you don't really see it used too often, but it's not bad. It, it also falls off to like grouped ZOMG rushes late game. It's more so better against like single target damage stuff. Um, balloon impact's not bad. You know, balloon impact right next to a reactor. It's not, not many balloons are gonna get by that, but I would like to see, I don't know what I want changed against Earth Bomb, but it's pretty balanced, I would say, for the most part. Maybe a slight buff to Balloon Impact would be good. But yeah, you just have better options late game, like the Monkey Ace. So we'll just put it there. Now, Village, 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 Village. I am going to probably put this B plus as well. I could put it C. Now, if Ice Village was still super broken, I would probably put this in A. But now that Ice Village is dead, I have to put it C. Like, the Call to Arms is still a great ability, but A, it's extremely expensive. It doesn't have full map coverage like a Homeland Defense. And, I mean, the Monkey Town's good if you're ecoing. You're going to get a little extra bonus on your eco, like 20% or whatever. But, I don't know. Like, it's just like, it's a weird tower. It's a weird tower. Like, Ninja Ice Village is great, but Heli Ice Village, Heli Blue Village, any, like, it's it's a weird tower, dude. Like, I think it's just C. I really do. I know the ability's good, but, like, there's just other options, man. You know? Like, I would rather go Ninja Ice Glue than Ninja Ice Village. That's facts. Since the shards nerf. All right, let's talk about Heli. I'm putting this in A minus. I think Heli's really strong. The Apache's very, very good mod DPS. Uh, Heli's not great early game, but that's why you bring something like Heli Farm Ice or Heli Farm Glue to help you with the group loons. Because, like I said, Glue Splatter and Glue Hosed are going to be your best friend for group loons. So we'll put it there for now. And I am going to also add that the village ability with heli also gets buffs the heli more than it did previously as of a recent update so that's pretty cool i think that's a good change but yeah heli farm ice heli from glue definitely two best heli strats there let's see all right man i think that's all i'm gonna do for this honest i don't think i want to change anything here I, I don't mind it let me know your guys's thoughts below um i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it's kind of a long one and I hope my voice wasn't too boring. But if you are at this point in the video, make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button. And let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.